Morning. Let's get a look at how stocks closed on Friday ahead of this morning's opening on Wall Street. Overall, things appear to be going down a little bit. The S&P 500 down a little over 1%, the NASDAQ down over 2%, and the Dow Jones down a little, well, less than 1%. And even though the economy hasn't officially been declared in a recession, Americans have been feeling the sting of rising consumer prices, especially in everyday basic necessities. You actually, and we have Mark Ravicheski joining us now from the Quad City Investment Group. And thank you for joining us this morning, Mark. Oh, my pleasure. Good to see you again. Yeah, David. you too. And you actually argue that the greater uh, recessionary concern right now is not that it's right now, but sometime in the next year. Why is that? Well, you know, look, I understand this whole debate on, on this, you know, technical versus official definition of a recession that, that's kind of going around. But it, it, look, if you're an average American consumer, it, it certainly feels like a recession, whether you want to call it one or not. Over the last 12 months, uh, this inflation is costing the average American household an extra $5,500 a year in higher costs. Are we in a technical recession, David? Yes. But look, the labor market, consumer spending, manufacturing, and other facets of the economy do remain fairly strong. For me, though, David, the greater recessionary concern is not so much now, and I understand the argument, but it's more so in 2023. And the reason being is this. It's going to take about six to nine months for all of these interest rate hikes we've been having to, you know, to filter their way through the U.S. economy. So that puts us towards the end of this year, the first half of 2023, when the brunt force of these interest rate hikes we've been seeing will, will really hit the U.S. economy. And what can people do now, or if we do get into greater economic pullback down the road, what can we do to help people get through these challenging times? The hallmark of this inflation, David, is that one, it is very expansive. And I heard some of your your commentary before this segment. Uh, and two, some of the biggest price increases uh, are coming from everyday basic necessities. Uh, prices for you know, food and clothing and, and housing, uh, energy have all soared over the last 12 months. Uh, you know, but there are some things you can do to help make your dollar go, you know, just a little bit further. Uh, you know, take some time to find those bargains. You know, there's not a lot of them out there, but if you take the extra time, uh, especially, David, for food and gas. Uh, over the last 12 months, food prices on average have risen by 10.9%. By the largest annual increase, David, for food going all the way back to 1979. Uh, gasoline prices come down a little bit, but are still 44% higher over the last year. Uh, but look, there are a number of, of cell phone apps out there that, uh, that show what stores in your area have the cheapest gas. Uh, now, in times like this, it really helps to create a budget. You know, that it essentially forces you to account for each and every uh, expense. If you are forced to take money from your savings and retirement account, and, and I, I get it, uh, you know, many Americans are, are now having to do that. You know, try to keep track of what you do take out. And hopefully once this inflation passes, uh, you can at least start to, to rebuild those accounts. Uh, obviously, David, if at all possible, avoid carrying credit card debt. Uh, I know it's difficult and, and we are seeing credit card balances spike across the nation. Uh, but as interest rates have soared, so have those uh, interest rates you're being charged on your credit cards. Uh, if you do have a, you know, a, a credit card and, and you're carrying a credit card balance, uh, see if you can transfer that balance to a credit card offering, you know, maybe a zero percent promotional rate or at least one that that simply offers a much, much lower interest rate. Yeah. And on the other side of this, we're also seeing that deposit accounts like CDs, money markets and savings accounts are getting higher interest rates as well. So what is your take on these sorts of accounts? You're right. They, they, they're finally, after all of this time, we are seeing a little bit of rise in, in those uh, those bank accounts. And uh, but look, if you do have some extra cash, though, David, you know, first try and pay off uh, uh, any high interest credit card balances. You're right. You might have uh, some credit cards now have an annual percentage rate of 
over 20 percent. So Yikes. try to chip away at those. Uh, but again, this is an area that definitely pays to shop around. You may find a bank that offers just a half a percent on a 12 month CD, but literally another bank down the street may give you, you know, two percent, maybe even two point five percent on that very CD. So again, shop around. All right, Mark, thank you so much for your expertise this morning. Great to see you again, David. Enjoy the rest of your day and your week. You too.